Welcome back to the next part. Uh, in this part, we'll cover strings in the Java programming language. Uh, Java provides a string class uh, in its standard library in java.lang. Anything in the java.lang package is part of the language and is automatically included, so you don't actually need to explicitly import strings. Uh, instead, you could just start using them. As we mentioned before, strings are immutable, which means that once they're created, you cannot change them. Uh, you have to create an entirely new string with new content in order to get a different string. Uh, there, uh, the class itself also provides a large collection of methods that you can use to manipulate strings and to change them and do a lot of different things with them. So let's go ahead and take a look at a quick demonstration here. So again, uh, you don't need to import it. Instead, if you want to create a string, you just simply create it. And you can set it to a value using the regular assignment operator. And li string literals are denoted using double quotes. Now, I want to demonstrate that they are indeed immutable. In other words, you cannot change them. So let me go ahead and create another string as a reference here that refers to the first string, s. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change. I'm going to make an attempt to change s to world, right? Now, t is referring to s, that is on line 15, we've got what is called a shallow copy. Uh, they were referring to the same thing. And on line 16, it seems that we're changing the value of s, but actually we're changing the reference. We're making t points to hello, s is now going to be pointing to something else, an entirely new string containing world. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and print both of these things out. And you see what I said was correct, that uh, s, s now has the value world, but the old value, hello, was not changed right? uh, because it's immutable. Uh, before we move on, I want to show you something else here. that I did basically poor man's debugging here in the demonstration by printing these out. Uh, what I want to do instead is I want to set a breakpoint uh, because I want to demonstrate at least a little bit of the debugger in Eclipse. Uh, to set a breakpoint, all you need to do is double click over here to the left of the numbers, and that's going to be a breakpoint. To start the debugger, all you need to do is go up here to debug, right? and it's going to switch us to the debugging perspective. And what, what you can do now do is you can step through the program line by line by clicking this. You can resume the, pro, uh, the program up here. You can stop the program entirely. You can step into additional code uh, sections. Like if you're go about to call a method, you can step into that method. Uh, and over here, you can take a look at your variables. For example, uh, S uh, has a value of world and T has a value of hello. So I didn't need to do poor man's debugging here of, uh, of printing these out explicitly. I could have done this through the debugger instead. So you can always stop. Now, it's still in the debug perspective here. I need to go back to my Java perspective, and all the perspectives are up here at the upper right. Uh, in fact, you can create many more other perspectives here to change the context in which you're working uh, in Eclipse. You can unset a breakpoint by double clicking it again and it's gone. Now, as I said, there are lots of methods that you can use to uh, try to manipulate strings. For example, let's go ahead and try to change all of the letters in T to uppercase letters. Another aspect of Eclipse is that you can do uh, command completion. So if I just go T dot to invoke a method on that class, a lot of things come up along with the documentation to the right. Uh, I want to change this to upper case, so there we go. And let me go ahead and print it out again. And we're going to get the same thing as last time. It's, it's not changed. And the reason is, again, strings are immutable. I cannot change T. This is actually, if I read the documentation on this, this is actually returning a new string here, right? Uh, it is going to change, uh, it's going to take the string stored at T, uh, it's going to change everything to uppercase and then give you a new string that uh, that's all uppercase. So we need to actually capture that in another variable. And again, we see that T is unchanged, but now X is all uppercase hello. 
So another thing that we previously mentioned is that you cannot use the equals equals operator uh, or the not equals operator to compare strings. You're comparing the references. Uh, both of those are references to memory locations in the Java Virtual Machine. So how do we go about comparing strings? Well, you can use the compare to method. So let me go ahead and get rid of the code from before. And let me go ahead and create a uh, couple more strings here. So apples come before oranges, right? Because of lexicographic ordering. It's not dictionary ordering uh, because all the uppercase letters come before lowercase letters. It's, uh, it's lexicographic ordering according to the ASCII text table. Uh, so we can uh, use the compare to method, which returns one of three things. The compare to method returns something negative if A comes before B, or in this case, S and T, uh, it returns zero if they're the same thing, and it returns something positive if they're out of order. So let me just go ahead and write some code here to show you that. So I'm comparing S to T. Right? S comes before T, so this is actually gonna return something negative. And when I run this, you see that apple comes before orange. Well, again, it returns one of three things. It returns something negative, zero, or positive, depending on the relative ordering of it. So I can also check to see if they're out of order. I can also check for equality, uh, which is something that the equals equals uh, equals equals uh, operator didn't give me, uh, by simply checking to see if compare to returns zero. Now we're going to get the same result as before, but if I go ahead and try to manipulate some of these things, zebra comes after orange because of Z. So orange comes before zebra. And if they're the same thing, then they're the same. What if I compare apples to apples, right? Now the first string is shorter, but they match up to the first five characters. So the second string is actually going to come after it, just like it would in a dictionary. But what happens if I change it to uppercase? Now the strings differ in the first character, and uppercase letters come before lowercase letters in the ASCII text table. So uh, uppercase apples will come before lowercase apple. So you have to be careful. It's lexicographic ordering. Here's another example illustrating that it's not straight up dictionary ordering. So now if we were to think of these as purely numbers, 89 of course comes before 123, but 123 comes before 89 because again, it's lexicographic ordering. That first digit one comes before the first digit eight, therefore 123, 123 is going to uh, come first in our lexicographic ordering. So be careful. Alternatively, you can ignore case using another method. And now the strings are the same because I'm calling a different method. As I said before, there are dozens upon dozens of different methods that you can invoke on the string library, on, on any string. Uh, you can catenation, you can format strings, uh, you can uh, get a particular, uh, you can get a particular character uh, based on zero indexing, uh, and you can replace, uh, use regular expressions to replace things and create new strings. You just have to remember that strings are immutable and. If you need to manipulate strings or process strings, your first step should be to ask, is it already done for me in the string library? 
Now, strings are immutable, but there is a mutable version that is a version of strings that can be changed in Java. It's called a string builder. There are actually a couple of these things, but I'm going to focus on the string builder for, uh, uh, for demonstration purposes. I'm going to create a new string builder called SB. I'll print it out and initially it's going to be empty. So nothing gets printed. I, I can actually change what's stored in that string builder. I can append things to it. And you see that it's now changed. I can append as many things I want as I want to it. And I can even manipulate it. So I can actually change the contents of a string builder. Uh, the, the idea of a string builder is that you can iteratively build a string without having to create a new object every single time. Uh, instead, internally, it's reorganizing itself. There's, a, there's an array representation somewhere. Uh, and if you ever need to dump that string builder to an actual string, you can also do that. And now at this point, S is immutable. As you can see here, I changed the string builder by appending some more exclamation points here, but S is unchanged uh, because again, I dumped it to a string and it was immutable. Next, we'll start looking at how to build our own methods.